Amid the harsh desert climate of Dubai, where temperatures can melt human willpower, the Burj Khalifa rises like a spear of steel and glass, piercing straight into the Middle Eastern sky. This is the tallest tower in the world, so tall that people believed it would collapse under its own weight, challenging the weak geology, being tested under 50 their heat, and facing winds stronger than sea storms. A structure that once made the whole world ask, is anyone crazy enough to build it? But what makes the Burj Khalifa a legend does not lie only in its record-breaking height, but in the entire journey of building it. In today's video, Mandarin Tech will help you decode how the Burj Khalifa was created in the harsh desert, and why, even until now, it still stands proudly as the ultimate symbol of modern engineering brilliance. The story truly begins with Dubai's silent crisis. When the Burj Khalifa rose to its astonishing height of 2,117 feet, it not only shattered architectural records, but also marked a turning point in the UAE's development strategy. For decades, the economy here relied heavily on oil. But as reserves gradually declined, Dubai was forced to find a new path, becoming a global city that attracts tourism and investment. The idea of building the tallest structure on the planet came from that very ambition. If Dubai wants to be remembered by the world, the planner said, it needs a symbol that anyone would want to witness with their own eyes. And with its strategic position between Europe and Asia, the busiest air transit crossroads in the world, Dubai had the foundation to turn this bold vision into reality. To ensure the tower would not only exist, but become the centerpiece of an entirely new city, Dubai launched a construction plan of unprecedented scale. More than 12,000 workers from over 100 countries worked in shifts around the clock. The Burj Khalifa emerged as a powerful declaration. Dubai would not simply survive the post-oil era, it would shape its future with intelligence, ambition, and world-class engineering. When engineers first surveyed the construction site of the Burj Khalifa in 2003, the area was nothing more than a vast expanse of sand, empty and almost completely without natural bedrock. Results from drilling hundreds of feet deep revealed that beneath the sand was not granite or solid limestone, but calcisiltite, a weak sediment formed from compressed shell powder. This material is brittle, easily fractured, and extremely unstable considered one of the worst possible conditions for the foundation of a super tall building. Construction history has already shown the consequences of misjudging foundations, such as the Leaning Tower of Pisa, due to its shallow foundation on sandy soil. Those structures are all much shorter than the Burj Khalifa. For the Burj Khalifa, its enormous load would be transferred to the weak ground through the foundation system. If the foundation were not designed correctly, even a small error could cause dangerous differential settlement. The question was, how could the tallest building in the world stand firmly on the weakest ground? For a structure like the Burj Khalifa to stand on its own, simply scaling up the design of conventional high-rise buildings was impossible. The engineering team had to create an entirely new foundation system one strong enough to support a structure weighing more than half a million tons on the weak desert soil. With no bedrock to anchor into, they designed a massive raft foundation, 12 feet thick, buried 24 feet deep, and covering 80,000 square feet. The raft foundation acts like a large board that spreads the entire load over a wide area, reducing pressure on the soft soil beneath. Just as flat-soled shoes do not sink into grass while high heels dig deep, the raft foundation helps the tower remain stable even without solid rock to rely on. Even though the raft foundation distributes load very effectively, it still needed to be anchored firmly to resist lateral movement caused by wind and soil deformation. Therefore, the engineers added a friction pile system consisting of 194 concrete piles, each 5 feet in diameter, and drilled to a depth of 164 feet. The remarkable thing is that these piles do not reach bedrock because the area has no solid rock layer at an appropriate depth. They rely entirely on friction between the pile surfaces and the weak sedimentary soil to stabilize the entire structure. Although each pile does not provide immense resistance individually, the combined effect of hundreds of them creates extraordinary lateral strength, 
sufficient to secure a tower weighing more than half a million tons. Settlement measurements after completion were only about 40 to 50 millimeters, an impressive figure for the tallest building in the world, proving that the foundation system performed exactly as designed. The next challenge lay in building a structure more than half a mile tall using cast-in-place concrete. As the tower continued to rise, the biggest problem emerged, how to pump concrete to nearly 1,965 feet a height that had never been achieved before. At this level, the concrete would remain inside the pipe for more than half an hour, long enough for it to begin setting and potentially ruin the entire system. To solve this, the engineers developed a special concrete mixture with admixtures that preserved workability for an extended period. The concrete was mixed with ice water to reduce its temperature and pumped only at night to avoid the outdoor heat above 104 degrees Celsius, which would cause the material to harden too quickly. The world's most powerful Putzmeister pumps were deployed, capable of pushing concrete nearly 1,965 feet in a single pumping operation, setting a new record in the construction of super tall buildings. Parallel to the challenge of pumping concrete, the engineers faced another issue. The central concrete core became too slender as the height increased dramatically. The solution was inspired by ancient Gothic architecture, where buttress walls were used to stabilize cathedral structures. The Burj Khalifa applies this principle by adding three large buttresses radiating from the central core, forming its distinctive Y-shaped plan. These three wings distribute compressive forces across the entire raft foundation, reduce torsion, and enhance wind resistance. This was the first time a three-buttress structural system had ever been used for a skyscraper and it became the fundamental reason why the Burj Khalifa could continue rising while maintaining the stability it needed. As the tower rose into the sky, the working environment became extremely dangerous. Workers were transported to higher floors using steel cages that moved along the structure. Even so, a small number of workers lost their lives during construction. Even after the building was completed, those responsible for maintenance, such as the rope suspended window cleaning crews, still had to face unpredictable risks. They hang themselves by three ropes in midair, working in strong winds that can reach more than 19 knots. When the wind exceeds the permitted limit, all work must stop immediately to ensure safety. Cleaning the entire glass facade of the tower takes up to three months, and all of it is done manually, mostly by workers from Nepal, where mountain climbing is almost a tradition. A silent but crucial component is the series of mechanical floors. These mechanical floors are the backbone that helps the entire building stand firm against storms and its own enormous weight. These are special technical levels arranged intermittently along the tower and can be identified by the dark bands on the exterior. Inside, they function as rigid planes, connecting the forest of concrete steel columns with the hexagonal central core, helping to distribute wind forces, reduce torsion, and prevent the structure from bending. These floors also house electrical systems, water tanks, and essential technical equipment, while providing anchor points for the facade cleaning teams. The higher the tower rose, the more it had to confront another major enemy, wind. In the Arabian desert, massive sandstorms can engulf the entire sky. During the summer, northwesterly winds frequently reach more than 50 miles per hour, exerting enormous pressure on a structure as tall as the Burj Khalifa. Instead of using counterweights, the builders decided to attack the root of the problem directly. The wind force had to be reduced from the very beginning. The solution lay in the tower's shape. They designed the Burj Khalifa in the form of three petals resembling the desert flower Hymenicalis. A three-wing floor plan, tapering as it rises, with the floors subtly rotated into a spiraling form. Thanks to the continuously changing shape with elevation, the wind can never form a synchronized vortex over the entire building. Instead, it breaks into small, scattered vortices that are not strong enough to pose a threat. Another remarkable feature is that the Burj Khalifa has an emergency elevator with a travel distance of 138 floors, the longest in the world, 
Contrary to the rule that, during a fire, elevators must not be used, this elevator is encased in an extremely thick, fire-resistant concrete layer and can bring 26 people down to the ground in less than one minute. In addition, the engineers designed a system of safe refuge areas, sealed, smoke-proof rooms with fresh air supply, distributed throughout the tower. When a fire occurs, the pressurization system pumps clean air into the stairwells, creating an invisible barrier that prevents smoke from entering. All of this ensures that even at the 160th floor, people inside still have enough time and safety to wait for rescue or evacuate in a controlled manner. When the tower reached nearly 1,500 feet, workers began installing the glass cladding, the skin of the building. Each glass panel, 26,000 in total, was installed manually over two and a half years. The glass surface area is enough to cover 20 football fields, but this shimmering facade brought a serious problem. Dubai's weather can exceed 49 degrees Celsius. Without proper treatment, the inside of the tower would turn into a boiler within hours. The solution lay in the metal-coated technology applied to the glass surface, which reflects more than 70% of solar heat. What you see glittering on the Burj Khalifa is solar energy being reflected away instead of entering inside. Even so, glass alone is not enough to cool a city in the sky. The tower has more than 65 million cubic feet of air that must be cooled continuously, and miles of air ducts along with massive mechanical floors filled with pumps powerful enough to inflate 13 hot air balloons every minute. By 2008, when the Burj Khalifa had already surpassed every record and become the tallest structure in the world, one part was still unfinished. The metal spire more than 700 feet tall. The problem was that no crane on earth was tall enough to install it from the outside. Therefore, the engineers chose an unconventional solution, assembling the entire spire inside the tower. They built each segment of the spire right within the hollow space of the building, then used a jacking system to push it upward, gradually along the vertical axis. When the final metal tip pierced through the top, the Burj Khalifa reached its ultimate height, 2,717 feet. No structure on the planet even comes close to this height, when you look at the entire city of Dubai below, you will understand that you are witnessing one of the greatest engineering feats in human history. But when a building rises high enough to touch the clouds, it becomes the target of the sky's most dangerous force, lightning. People often joke that the Burj Khalifa is Dubai's lightning rod, but that statement is entirely serious. The tower has been struck by lightning at least 18 times since it was completed. To protect the entire structure, the engineers designed a special lightning protection system at the top of the tower. This system uses sensors to detect when a lightning strike is about to occur and releases a trigger arc to attract the electrical discharge to the exact point needed. But protecting only the pinnacle is not enough. Therefore, the entire metal frame of the Burj Khalifa is designed as a Faraday cage, guiding the electrical current down to the ground along the exterior shell instead of letting it enter the interior spaces where people and electronic equipment are located. At a certain point, every structure becomes a thing of the past. But Burj Khalifa is different. It becomes a standard. From the foundation driven into desert sand to the final meters of the spire, every detail of this building tells the same story. Humans didn't just build a tower, they built their own capability. And it is the willingness to do what no one else dared to imagine that turned Burj Khalifa from a bold blueprint into an engineering icon of the modern world. It reminds us that limits exist only until someone surpasses them. If you want to continue exploring the great structures that have changed engineering and the face of the world, don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss any journey with Mandarin Tech.